In the next couple of days, at the time of recording, it will be Remembrance Day. A day that we take to remember the brave men and women that gave their lives during World War I. The Great War ended hostilities at the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, concluding one of the bloodiest wars in history, where around 16 million people, soldiers and civilians alike, were killed. The war began upon the assassination of the Archduke Franz Ferdinand, heir to the Austro-Hungarian Empire. The killing would spark a chain of events that started with the Austro-Hungarian Empire and Serbia waging war and escalated to Germany, Austria-Hungary, Bulgaria and the Ottoman Empire, known collectively as the Central Powers, fighting against the empires of Great Britain, France, Russia, Italy, Romania, Japan and the United States, collectively known as the Allied Powers. Thanks to new military technologies and the horrors of trench warfare, World War I saw unprecedented levels of carnage and destruction. I'm Josh. And I'm Dave of Nerd and Dragon. Unless we forget the sacrifices made by the valiant men and women during the Great War, we take you through 10 battles of World War I. The Battle of Verdun. The Battle of Verdun, 21st of February to the 18th of December 1916, was the longest battle of the First World War. The battle began in February with a German attack on the fortified French town of Verdun where bitter fighting would continue for most of the year. The opening onslaught saw an extraordinary concentration of firepower, and although the French were pushed back, they did not falter. In the summer, the Germans were forced to reduce the garrison at Verdun after the British and Russians launched their own offensives elsewhere. The French retook lost ground in the autumn, and the French secured a defensive victory before the year's end. The Germans had lost over 430,000 men, killed or wounded, and the French approximately 550,000. The trauma of this loss not only affected French political and military decision-making during and after the war, it had a lasting effect on the French national consciousness. The Battle of Mons On August 23, 1914, four divisions of the British Expeditionary Force, commanded by Sir John French, struggled with the German First Army over the 60-foot-wide Mons Canal in Belgium, near the French frontier. The Battle of Mons was the last of four Battle of the Frontiers that took place over as many days on the Western Front between Allied and German forces in the opening month of World War I. The first three, at Lorraine, Ardennes and Charleroi, involved French forces under the central command of General Joseph Joffrey. On the morning of August 23rd, German guns opened fire on the British positions at Mons, focusing on the northernmost point of a salient formed by a loop in the canal. Though the German First Army enjoyed 2 to 1 numerical superiority, they did not make effective use of it, and the British regiments at the salient withstood six hours of shelling and infantry assault. Late that same day, the French ordered a general retreat of the French 5th Army at Charleroi. This left the British Expeditionary Force in danger of envelopment by the Germans, and a decision was made to withdraw the troops as soon as possible. By the time the battle ended after 9 hours, some 35,000 British soldiers had been involved, with a total of 1,600 casualties. Thus, the first day of British combat in World War I ended in retreat and bitter disappointment. Although the steadfastness of the British Expeditionary Force had delayed the Germans' advance by one day, within weeks of the battle, however, British public imagination elevated Mons to mythic status and those who had died to heroes until British defeat came to seem more like victory in retrospect, similar to that of the tale of the 300 Spartans at Thermopylae. The Third Battle of Ypres, Passchendaele The Third Battle of Ypres, 31st of July to the 10th of November 1917, has come to represent the horrors associated with the war on the Western Front. It is frequently known by the name of the village where it culminated, Passchendaele. The Belgian town of Ypres and its surrounding area was a key battleground throughout the war. Throughout 1917, the British soldiers had been suffering heavy casualties there. Holding a key position in the town, Sir Douglas Haig planned to charge from his position in order to capture a rail junction which would restrict the supply chain of the German submarine base in Bruges. Prior to the battle, Britain had already captured Mezines Ridge, but the ridge had been reinforced by the time of battle commencing. The opening attacks weren't successful due to the over-elaborate plans and unseasonal rain, which created boggy conditions for the troops to navigate. 
More favourable conditions in September allowed the British Army to make steady progress. This advancement demoralised the Germans, who did not have a response, and the repressive military tactics of Britain that caused a great deal of German casualties. Bolstered by this advancement in September, Hay continued the offensive throughout October, but rainy conditions returned, restricting the British forces once again. The Canadians did manage to capture Passchendaele Ridge on the 10th of November, but Haig was unable to capture the vital rail junction. The Allied leaders eventually called off the offensive, with the soldiers utterly demoralised, both sides having suffered heavy casualties, Haig's men making no strategic gain, his reputation in England was forever tarnished. The Battle of Jutland the Battle of Jutland, the 31st of May to the 1st of June 1916, was the largest naval battle of the First World War, the only time that the British and German fleets of dreadnought battleships actually came to blows. The German high seas fleet hoped to weaken the Royal Navy by launching an ambush on the British Grand Fleet in the North Sea. However, the British were warned by their codebreakers and put both forces to sea early. Jutland was a confused and bloody battle involving 250 ships and around 100,000 men. Initial encounters between Admiral Sir David Beatty's battlecruiser force and the High Seas Fleet resulted in a loss of several ships. The Germans damaged Beatty's flagship HMS Lion and HMS Queen Mary, both of which blew up when German shells penetrated their ammunition magazines. Beatty withdrew until Sir John Jellicoe's Grand Fleet arrived. The Germans, now outgunned, turned for home. The battle confirmed British naval dominance and secured its control of shipping lanes, allowing Britain to implement the blockade that would contribute to the German defeat in 1918. The Battle of Amiens The Battle of Amiens, 8th to the 11th of August 1918, signalled the start of the Hundred Days Campaign, a four-month period of successes for the Allied forces. Having survived the German spring offensives, Allied forces launched a counter-attack of their own, which resulted in them constantly being on the advance from the summer of 1918. Learning from the experiences throughout the war, the Allies had developed both technology and operational tactics, such as flexible infantry firepower and tanks, which allowed the forces to continue to press the Germans. These discoveries would be the blueprint for future military endeavours. The Battle of Amiens opened on the 8th of August with a surprise attack and the British forces gaining seven miles on the first day. Implementing their learning from previous offensives, Britain knew when to stop advancing, and after four days of conflict, Britain withdrew and launched another offensive elsewhere. This would become the recipe for success, forcing the increasingly exhausted Germans back. The Battle of the Somme The Battle of the Somme 1st of July to the 18th of November 1916 was a combined operation between British and French forces designed to achieve a crucial victory over the Germans on the Western Front. For many in Britain, the resulting battle remains the most infamous and fatal episode of the First World War. In December 1915, Allied commanders had met to discuss strategies for the upcoming year and agreed to launch a joint French and British attack in the region of the River Somme in the summer of 1916. Intense German pressure on the French at Verdun throughout 1916 made action on the Somme increasingly urgent and meant the British would take on the main role in the offensive. They were confronted with German defences that had been meticulously laid out over many months of preparation. Despite a seven-day barrage prior to the attack on the 1st of July, the British did not achieve the quick advance their leadership had planned for and the Somme became a deadlocked battle of attrition. Over the next 141 days, the British advanced a maximum of 7 miles. More than 1 million men from all sides were killed, wounded or captured. British casualties on the first day, numbering over 57,000, of which 19,240 were killed, make it the bloodiest day in British military history. The Allied offensive at the Somme was a strategic obligation fought to meet the needs of an international alliance. This battle is often remembered nowadays to remind of the futility of war. British commanders learned difficult but important lessons on the Somme that would contribute to the eventual Allied victory in 1918. The Battle of Megiddo The Battle of Megiddo, 19th to the 25th of September 1918, marked the start of the final British-led assault in the Sinai and Palestine campaign. It successfully combined cavalry, infantry, artillery, armoured vehicles and aircraft to achieve a decisive victory over the Ottoman Turks 
and their German allies. On the 19th of September, the Egyptian expeditionary force of British Lieutenant General Sir Edmund Allenby launched an offensive against Ottoman forces in northern Palestine and the Jordan Valley. Allenby had devised a plan to cut off the Ottoman forces which were regrouping at Megiddo after a successful deception campaign which convinced the Ottoman army that the Allies would attack from the east. The onslaught opened with a brief artillery bombardment and the Allied soldiers quickly broke through the pummeled Ottoman lines, advancing over 30 kilometres on the first day. The Desert Mounted Corps then encircled the Ottoman troops. Their 8th and 7th armies collapsed under the force of the Allied attack, with tens of thousands surrendering. The Battle of Cambrai The Battle of Cambrai, November to December 1917, was a British offensive on the Western Front during World War I that marked the first large-scale effective use of tanks in warfare. Appreciating the futility of using tanks in the Flanders swamps, the officers of the British Tank Corps looked for an area where they could achieve some measure of success. Their Chief General Staff Officer drew up a project for a large-scale raid to scour a canal-enclosed pocket on the front southwest of Cambrai in northern France, where the rolling downland lent itself to tank movement. The basic idea was to release a swarm of tanks without any preparatory bombardment to avoid warning the enemy of an impending attack. With the horror of Passchendaele demonstrating their need for fresh tactics on the Western Front, the British command adopted the scheme. 19 British divisions were assembled for the offensive, supported by 476 tanks and 5 horsed cavalry divisions. The British armoured force was moved into position at night so as to avoid detection by German aerial reconnaissance craft. Moreover, cloudy weather limited air operations during the day. For the initial attack, 8 British divisions were launched against 3 German divisions. Despite the surprise and early successes, the British forces only achieved an advance of about 6 miles. The Germans were quick to launch a counterstroke with 20 divisions against the British advance. By December 5th, the British had been driven back almost to their original positions. Casualties on both sides were about equal, roughly around 45,000 each. Despite the British failure to exploit the initial success of their tanks, the battle demonstrated that armoured tanks were key to victory on the Western Front. The First Battle of the Marne At the beginning of the First World War, Germany hoped to avoid fighting on two fronts by eliminating France prior to battling Russia. The initial German offensive had some early success, but there were not enough reinforcements immediately available to sustain momentum. The French and British launched a counter-offensive at the Marne between the 6th and the 10th of September 1914, and after several days of bitter fighting, the Germans retreated. Germany's failure to defeat the French and British at the Marne also had important strategic implications. The Russians had mobilised more quickly than the Germans had anticipated and the opening months of the war caused profound shock due to the huge casualties caused by modern weapons. Losses on all fronts for the year 1914 topped 5 million, with a million men dead. This was a scale of violence unknown in any previous war. The terrible casualties sustained in open warfare meant that soldiers on all fronts had begun to protect themselves by digging trenches which would dominate the Western Front until 1918. The Battle of Gallipoli The Gallipoli Campaign, the 25th of April 1915 to the 9th of January 1916, was the land-based element of a strategy intended to allow Allied ships to pass through the Dardanelles, capture Constantinople, which is modern-day Istanbul, and ultimately knock Ottoman Turkey out of the war. General Sir Ian Hamilton decided to make two landings on the Gallipoli Peninsula, splitting the joint British and New Zealand forces. However, both landings were quickly contained by determined Ottoman troops, and neither the British nor the Anzacs were able to advance. Trench warfare quickly took hold, mirroring the fighting on the Western Front. Casualties mounted heavily, and in the summer, heat conditions rapidly deteriorated. Sickness was rampant, food quickly became inedible, and there were vast swarms of black corpse flies. Casualties began to grow rapidly. After many stalemates, in December 1915, it was decided to evacuate. Josh here. We really hope you enjoyed the video. It was really interesting to research. We have both had members of our family that have served in the armed forces and believe that we should never forget the sacrifices soldiers have made for us. Did any of your family take part in World War I? Let us know in the comments. If you could like the video and subscribe to us, it would help us out a ton. Thank you all for watching.